Welcome into the Grace Point Daily Podcast in the One Year Bible Journey. Pastor Jeremiah Johnson, day 44. We're getting there one day at a time. Well, it is by no means, well, I'm ready for winter to be over with at, at this particular time that I'm recording this. We get like, we're at that stage here in Southwest Missouri. We have like a 70 degree day and then it's 30 degrees and then it's, a, and so anyway, I'm ready. I'm ready for the full on spring mode here. But anyway, until that day comes, uh, hey, uh, what I was getting, alluding to is my favorite Christmas movie, which, you know, Christmas is gone, but my favorite Christmas movie, if you have known me for any length of time is Elf, my favorite movie. And uh, so many classic lines. Uh, I, I could just watch it over and over again. I never grow tired of watching Elf, the Christmas movie. But uh, I love in the movie when Buddy figures out that he, he, he grew he was adopted. He was adopted by Santa Claus, okay? So he does not, he grows up not realizing he's not an elf, but he's actually a human. So anyway, in the movie, uh, he's, you know, he's way taller than everyone. He doesn't have pointy ears, all these other kind of things. He finally, you know, gets a sense of like, maybe I'm not an elf and he, he can't do what elves do. He doesn't have the skills and abilities of an elf because he's a human, okay? So anyway, he is overhearing the conversation of two other elves and uh, discovers he's human, not an elf. And then it's, you know, the story goes on. But prior to that, they're giving him a hard time. You know, he's feeling down and out because he can't produce toys at the same volume and rate that elves can. And they're like, no, buddy, you have you have lots of special talents like like you change the you change the light, the, the batteries and the smoke detector, triple A and you take the choir down a whole octave, all those kind of things. OK, what in the world does this have to do with the Bible? Well, of course, Elf has a lot to do with the Bible. Come on. Well, anyway, no, here we go. Here's what I really want to talk about is I was reading in the Bible. Exodus chapter 35 in verse 10. And they're talking about, if you're watching online there, I'm bouncing around, the uh, offerings for the tabernacle. But let me read just a good portion of this. It says, Come all you who are gifted craftsmen, construct everything that the Lord has commanded. The tabernacle and its sacred tent, its covering, clasp, frames, crossbars, posts, and bases. The ark and its carrying poles, the ark's cover, the place of atonement, the inner curtain to shield the ark. The table, its carrying poles, and all its utensils, the bread of the presence for light, the lampstand, its accessories, the lamp cups, and the olive oil for lighting, the incense altar and its carrying poles, the anointing oil and fragrant incense, the curtain for the entrance of the tabernacle, the altar of burnt offering, the bronze grating of the altar and its carrying poles and utensils, uh, were uh, the wash basin with its stand, the, sorry, I was trying to get ahead of myself here. <laughs> the curtains for the walls of the courtyard, the post and their bases, the curtain for the entrance to the courtyard, the tent pegs of the tabernacle and courtyard and their ropes, the beautifully stitched garments for the priest to wear while ministering in the holy place, the sacred garments for the Aaron, the, for Aaron, the priest and the garments for his sons to wear as they minister as priests. So the whole community of Israel left Moses and returned to the tents. All whose hearts were stirred and whose spirits were moved came and brought their sacred offerings to the tabernacle. They brought all the materials needed for the tabernacle. And, and uh, so that, and then I'll bounce down to verse 25. All the women who were skilled in sewing and spinning prepared blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine linen cloth. And so what's happening here is as the tabernacle is being constructed, well, everyone begins to bring their skills and their, their talents to the table to do the work of the Lord. And guys, this is the point of life. This is why you are who you are. And this is why I am who I am is because I have gifts and talents and abilities <laughs> that are given by God for God. And that's my encouragement for you today is, is what are your gifts what are your skills? And are you not only using them in life to, you know, whether work, those kind of things, but are, are you using those skills for God? Because that's what they're really, really for. And I love how it took this passage scripture shows us, you know, it took a multitude of people with various gifts and talents to do the work of God. You know, it took women, it took men, it took laborers, it took seamstresses it you know it, it took builders it took priests it took all kinds of things to do the lord the work of god and that has not changed even in 
today's elements in today's times, we, we still need the, the whole crew and, and everyone to be a part of the team. And this thought carries in to the New Testament is that we're the body of Christ, one body composed of many parts. And so I want to encourage you today because there's, you know, this is not uh, meant to be condemning, but you know, there's still people just sitting there might go to church, good people. Uh, maybe that's you today. And, and you're not using your gifts and your skills for the Lord. And he, he, here's what I might, you know, say as a pastor is like, well, you could be, well, no one's asked me to. And and, and sometimes it, it requires you taking initiative to express your gifts and your talents. I know sometimes I've, I've been in churches, served in churches where, um, all of a sudden you see somebody expressing this gift and this skill. And you're like, I, I didn't even know that you could do that. And you were so good at that. Why didn't you let us know beforehand? You know? So anyway, uh, so those are some things that, you know, I don't know as a pastor sometimes. So anyway, I just want to encourage you today is that you would spend your life using your gifts and your talents for the Lord. And are you doing that? And, and are there unused gifts and, and there's new ones to be discovered, you know, wh whatever that is. And it, it might be the most simplest of, of things, but you can use it for the Lord. Want to give me a cheese? You want to give you a cheesy example illustration? Well, this at the end of the year, there's a lady, 96 year old lady in our church who's makes really good monkey bread, AKA pull apart bread, whatever you want to call it. And she, when we're in this conversation, she has made one for me the last couple of years, but because she's 96, she's like, I, I couldn't make it this year, but she's like, man, even an idiot can make this. And I was like, I, even an idiot can make it. Well, that's me. That, I, you're saying I can make it. And so anyway, I took on the task of making monkey bread. I learned how to do it. Now I'm really good at it. And, uh, just this last Sunday I made monkey bread and uh, sold it or got donations for it to use for youth and children's. And, you know, there you go. Using my skills for the Lord. That's the point. Are you using your skills? If not, come on guys, that's what God gave them to you for is there are gifts given by God for God. So there's your word of encouragement for the day on this daily Bible is going to take us all, all, all of us together to do the work of the Lord. So thanks guys. Thanks for your support. Like share and subscribe to our various platforms, podcasts, YouTube channel, all those things. God bless you guys. I'll talk to you next time.